Hey, I'm really excited to listen to this next presentation. You will too. We're going to be talking about kudzu. A lot of people don't like kudzu. It's a problem. But Dr. Dr. Chandra and his students are doing some remarkable stuff. So starting from the back, tell us who, and just give me your names, okay? Uh, my name is Jacob Black. I'm Lindsay Miller. I'm Garrett Smith. I'm Kiara Phillips. I'm Caden Long. I'm Haridas Chandra. Ben McNamee. Megan Lambert. I'm JT Mills. JT, what is this project all about? Well, there's a lot of different parts of this project, but here at Belfry this year, we just wanted to see what the potential of kudzu was, you know, because being from Eastern Kentucky, we look in our backyards and we see kudzu everywhere. It's the plant that never stops growing. It takes over everything. And up till now, there's relatively no use for it, you know? Whenever we look at ways to find a new resource, a uh, renewable resource, we want to look at something that grows quickly, that is relatively unused and therefore cheap, and something that's renewable enough to be able to replace things quicker than things like wood or paper or uh, plastics, you know, because if they're not cheaper than plastics, if they're not more efficient and effective, then they're never going to be put into place. But kudzu has served as something that we think could really take off in the next, you know, maybe five to ten years, something that could be used for different, whether it's medicinal purposes, plastics, um, building materials and construction. We've taken all different aspects of the project this year. And so, uh, as you can see before me, uh, I, Jakey, and Lindsay, in our project this year, we've been looking at the different um, potentials that it has to be used for a building material and just uh, whatever we can do with the plant in a very broad <coughs> aspect. So we started out by looking whether or not it could be made into a brick. And as you see here, this is one of our final products. This is kudzu blended into just a normal kitchen blender with nothing more than water and all natural potato starch. So this brick right here, it would be biodegradable. It would be able to hold up to more weathering than a brick simply made with water. Um, and it's very light. Obviously, it's the size of a normal brick that you would see on a house, but it's probably one eighth or one tenth of the weight. Yes, go right ahead. Okay. And you can see it holds up its own weight. It's stiff. You know, it doesn't break in half or anything whenever you hold it. I can push down on it and it's, it's very sturdy. Um, and it's dry. We started out just uh, mixing it together and using a small mold, mixing it with things like water, glue, just as experimentation. And whenever we first mixed it with water, we really didn't think we would have a result. But uh, we left it for a few weeks and I came back and popped it out of the mold and there we had a small brick and it stood up to its own weight just like this one. And it really surprised us all. And it showed us, you know, back at the beginning of the year that this project does have potential. And so uh, we went on just to add different all natural ingredients. And overall what we want to do is find a way to make kudzu bricks in place of uh, normal bricks or normal harmful non-biodegradable building materials to just A, have an environmental aspect obviously not to leave behind as much waste and also to give people a reason and a use for kudzu to make it A, cheaper so that way it will be implemented in place of things that are already being used and B, if we have a use for the kudzu then hopefully it will cause it to be more controlled, you know, give people a reason to cut it down in uh, local civic areas, you know, in cities just like mine and the backyard whenever you look out it's taking over the trees. And so it will have both an environmental and a civic aspect. Um, and this right here actually, we distilled the kudzu in just a small distillery that we made and we got this extract from it and it looks just like water because the kudzu doesn't contain any essential oils because it's not an aromatic plant. But we plan on taking this to a spectrometer at either UK or the Louisville Speed School to see the exact composition of it, what kind of elements it contains, you know, and chemicals. And we hope to see if that can have uh, potential either as a fuel source or um, medicinal properties as well because there are many holistic medicine properties of kudzu that people have used it for in the past but none that have actually been acted on you know to make medicines or approved by the FDA or anything so uh, you can now talk to Megan here about her okay, project. Okay, Megan, what, so there's about three different projects here right. with kudzu. Okay, yeah. you know, and of course kudzu, I used to, I bought some goats once so they would eat all the kudzu that was in developing, or in developing my house. So we're seeing some good things here. So, Megan? So I'm making gold nanoparticles with my partner, Kiera, and gold nanoparticles are a cancer detectant. And it contains now a trisodium citrate, which is a toxic solution. And we're replacing that toxic solution with kudzu extract. And we've done the leaf, the root, and the stem and gotten really good results. And in doing this, we are making the solution less toxic for cancer patients to go get an MRI scan and take in the gold nanoparticle solution. That's actually more efficient. Gold nanoparticles can attach to like even the smallest of cancer cells. That's remarkable. Yeah. Uh, what have you learned thus far from this? 
Um, so far, I've learned how to read graphs to see exactly where the light shines through and find the gold nanoparticles and how the waves go through it is really different than what I've ever seen. Okay, great. So our project is using uh, kudzu and plastic to form a 3D filament with the extruder we've uh, made ourselves. So we have two extruders. Uh, one was uh, purchased from a company in Italy and it's a kit that we put together. And our second extruder is one we got um, from parts we collected here at Lowe's and Home Depot and Amazon. And we purchased all this and it's nearly $130 which is much more cheaper than the one we bought from Italy. And our goal is to use uh, this plastic and kudzu mix to uh, form together a, uh, a filament that will be used at 3D printers to make useful products from two unuseful um, or harmful substances to this um, environment. And by doing this, we hope to eventually form a wooden filament out of this, like um, there, there is currently right now, uh, by grinding uh, the wood and making it to a more powderous form and placing it with the plastic and melting it together and mixing it and then extruding it through our extruder. Now, would that help? We know it plastic is not biodegradable and it's creating a problem. Would that somehow help address that issue? Uh, well, no, not really, but also, um, but with 3D products right now, um, they're ma uh, used to make, uh, printers are used to make uh, customizable things and also things that are beneficial that you can't really buy at the store. Uh, so it'd be using these two substances and getting them out of our environment in a negative way and putting them towards a more positive aspect. This sounds, I, I didn't do this type of thing when I was in school. Is, is this fun? Yes. 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 I enjoy it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what are you learning from this beyond what you've heard here? A lot of hands on skills. Yes. Work with your hand. You know, and that's the one thing that people that are experts in rocketry and everything, they find out that a lot of people have got the technical knowledge, but they don't have the hand skill knowledge, which is essential in so many type of jobs. And a lot of this has just been plain old experimentation, you know, like we started this project, Jakey and Lindsay and I, we decided that we wanted to use kudzu to make a cheap building material for housing for the homeless. And so, I mean, that was really easy to say, you know, it was a lot easier said than done, but then we said, you know, how do we go about this? Where do we start? And I started, of course, by looking up YouTube, the internet, have any, has anyone else done this before? And I'm sure that people have experimented with it and tried it before, but I didn't find any quality, you know, tutorials, any advice or instructions on how other people have done it, you know, so this is relatively new groundbreaking research from as far as we can tell. And so we were kind of just left on our own, you know, in open waters to figure out how we wanted to do this and what we wanted to do. So just like I said, we found the first brick completely by accident. We used a kitchen blender, blended it together, and we got a product. And so that opened our eyes, you know, to this actually has potential. And so this just showed us, you know, that even though sometimes you don't we live in a generation, you know, if you don't know how to do something, you look it up on YouTube or you go to, straight to Google. But still, you know, there's the quality of just experimenting with something, the true science behind it, and whether you get a brick that falls apart or a brick that stays together, you know, you've learned either how to make a brick or how not to make a brick. Well, it's like Thomas Edison, he talked about, what was it, I, he learned from the 10,000 mistakes that he made to finally find that thing that, that worked. Any of you folks, uh, from what you've done here, has this encouraged you to go into a different career than you thought, than you originally thought about? Definitely me. I, I was leaning more towards the medical field, but after seeing stuff like this, and my project's very hands-on and um, building building different things, so I'm um, interested in the engineering field now and going more at that aspect. Yep. Well, folks, thank you so much. Uh, we're so excited to see what's going to develop, and I'm sure you're going to have some products that may be on the market before long. So, uh, and you're very entrepreneurial, you've got a great instructor. Uh, thank you all for being on, on our program. Thank, thank you, you for, for having us. us. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.